it's time to take control of our controllers. Hey everyone, welcome back to Print and Play. Now, if you're anything like me, when you were growing up, when you were finished with your video games, it was time to put them away. I spent a lot of time doing this. See, my parents didn't really appreciate the aesthetics of video games. They were seen as clutter and best put out of the way. But now that I'm grown up and moved out on my own, I know my vintage video game collection is actually something to be proud of. But even so, I've always struggled with trying to figure out the best way to display my controllers. I personally think that a lot of these controllers have a lot to offer in terms of their visuals. The colors and designs have become kind of iconic over time. In fact, if you talk to most people with a retro video game collection, they'll say half the fun is figuring out how to show it off. Well, wouldn't you know it, somebody on the internet's already figured out how to address this, and they've come up with an awesome way to display your controllers when you're not using them, at least for a few systems. Now, this is a pretty simple system. The way it works is you print off one of these plates, which, as you can see, has some pegs on it. The pegs correspond with holes on the back of the Super Nintendo controller, and you can just go ahead and push it right in there, just like that. Now this is actually coupled with another piece. Now these are common to all the controller mounts, so you can print off a bunch of these in case one of them gets broken and they're interchangeable. With the piece in the back, you can then simply slip it into the clip on the back top of this, and now you have a way to take your controller and mount it on the edge of a shelf like that. So it keeps it nice on about a 45 degree angle pointing out to whoever's around looking at it. It really cleans things up and it allows you to showcase the way these vintage designs look. They have this not only for Super Nintendo, but also for Sega Genesis, and of course, the original Nintendo. Now again, this highlights an interesting thing that 3D printing can do. Years ago, if somebody had an idea, they might be able to implement it for themselves. They could go as far as to maybe put a tutorial up online, but each person would be responsible for replicating their own results to varying degrees of success. Now anybody with even the basic $100, $150 3D printer has the ability to start implementing some of these designs. So it really allows us to collaborate and come up with better ways. Obviously, most of my examples relate to retro video games, but there's thousands of applications for being able to come up with a design. From replacing parts on cars that were traditionally fairly expensive to coming up with prosthetic limbs, 3D printing really allows anybody to prototype out an idea and then share it with the world. So if you want to give these prints a shot, I'll go ahead and toss the link in the description below. If you like this video, why not toss me a thumbs up? If you aren't subscribed here already, please do. I'd be glad if you stuck around. And if you have something you want me to print in the future, let me know in the comments below. Again, I'm James from Print and Play. I'll see you guys again real soon. And until then, stay creative.